This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Is this the best time to be a Cleveland sports fan? In recent memory, at least. Um, I think it might be. But in order to appreciate where Cleveland sports is, we have to talk about where Cleveland sports was not too long ago. Now, there have been many of dark times for the city and for its teams in particular. If you go back to the Cleveland Guardians history, the 70s and the 80s weren't a great time overall for the franchise. The 90s were hot, the 2000s were hot, but that middle part after like Grady Sizemore flamed out, it wasn't really great for the Guardians. If you look at the Cavs, they had a strong period in the 80s, 90s, and somewhat in the 70s, or at least in the late 70s. And then, LeBron came, then you struggled, then they struggled, then LeBron came, and then you got really good, and then LeBron left, and then you struggled again, then LeBron came back, and you got really good, and then he left, and then you struggled, and now you, you're, you're all right, um, and if you look at the Browns, we talk about a time of this channel, we know where the Browns have struggled, I don't need to illustrate that all over again, but there was one period of time where all three of these things converged in the worst possible way, at the worst possible time. And this is what I will call probably the darkest time in Cleveland sports. Now, were the teams as bad as they ever were? No, but collectively, I feel like this is the worst, the most down bad Cle the city of Cleveland has been as a sports town pretty much ever. And when I say that, I'm saying in terms of overall success, in terms of overall morale, all of these things. And what I'm talking about is the four-year period where LeBron James was not here. Now, the reason it is categorized as that is because for a long time, LeBron James was the main thing bringing people hope that the city of Cleveland will be a championship team. Yeah, the Guardians had some moments while LeBron was here, but they never really felt like a legitimate contender during the whole LeBron era. Like maybe... You can say 2007, they felt like they could have did something, but that would have been more of a miracle run than a legitimate this team should do it. I mean, like Kenny Lofton was playing the outfield in 07 for that team. Throughout the whole LeBron era, throughout many of us, because like, let's face it, a lot of y'all were born in the 2000s. Some of y'all were born in the 90s like me. And then there's the people who were born after that in the 80s, in the 70s, and the 60s. But for those of us who were born in the 90s and the 2000s, I mean, like, all we knew as far as Cleveland success was like one season of the Guardians and LeBron James, right? It was pretty much all LeBron James, um, all of the success, all of the fun moments, all of the memorable things, all of the national media coverage of the city of Cleveland got, it all came down to one guy, LeBron James. And it will be interesting to see how this gets covered over time. But part of the frustration that the city of Cleveland had, the anger that the city of Cleveland had when LeBron James left was not just that LeBron James left or even how he did it. I think the how he did it part gets overblown it's just the reality of what that meant for the people in cleveland that lebron james was leaving which is that the one thing you've had to beat your chest about is gone and that's what it was at that point sports wise um there was really nothing to be proud about in cleveland uh browns at that time, there was nothing to be proud about with the Guardians at that time. It was just LeBron. LeBron leaves, and now you're just looking around, and you're like, wow, we got three teams that just stink now. And that reality, I think, drove a lot of the resentment that people feel towards LeBron. It's not the main element that that was driving um, a lot of the crazy discourse that was happening at the time, but it is a element that was there. Like, hey, the this city, like, pretty much— 
has nothing to look forward to in in sports now because LeBron James had left. And then on top of that, right, LeBron James leaves. He goes to Miami. Nationally, people, some people are defending the city of Cleveland, but a lot of people are kind of just using it as another reason to dump on the city of Cleveland. You're, the morale of the city, in a sports aspect at least, was not at a great place after LeBron James had left. It was at a bad place. And what made it worse was that the teams stunk in that era. So if you just look at the Browns and what the Browns did while LeBron James was gone, they went 18 of 46. Now, this is the 2010 to 2013 era. I always will say this, and I will say this until the end of time. That stretch of Cleveland Browns football was the hardest to watch of any stretch of Cleveland Browns football. Yeah, you could tell me about the Hugh Jackson era. At least they were noteworthingly bad, right, in the Hugh Jackson era. Like, they just stunk, and it was kind of comedic to watch them stink this bad. The 2010 to, like, 2013 Browns, they weren't entertaining they weren't amusingly bad. They just sucked. Like, they just found ways to not win games. They would just lose games. Like, they would have enough talents where you would fool yourself into thinking that they could win a game. And then you watch them, and they were just awful. Like, the offenses at the time that you were running, like, it was the Colt McCoy. And then you transitioned from Colt McCoy to Brandon Whedon, who I still will always say is the worst quarterback in Cleveland Browns history. Um, then you have, what, you went to Jason Campbell after that? Ugh, yuck, yuck. It was just the most boring, horrible football you've ever seen. It. There is nothing outside of, like, the, the, the tail end of Josh Cribbs' run here in Cleveland. Outside of that, there was nothing interesting about those Browns team. Like, yeah, Joe Thomas was on him and he was cool. But, like, let's be honest, a good left tackle is not changing your viewing experience that much when your team sucks and the team sucked. Um, it, it just was, for me at least, the most trying time to be a Browns fan. Because, again, there's one thing when the team's breaking your heart or, or when the team is just – tanking but you get miles garrett and you got two top five picks in the draft like there was shit to be excited about when hugh jackson was here that wasn't hugh jackson tell me what we were excited about in 2010 oh trent richardson yeah he gets here for one year we trade him the next like at least with johnny manzel you were excited for like three days like, there was just no excitement. Like, he was like, maybe Muhammad Massaquoi gets it together. Maybe Greg Greg Little learns how to catch a football this week. It's just, ugh. The worst time to be a Browns fan. 2010, 2013. I will die on that hill. Anyways, that's just one team. Another, <laughs> another team in Cleveland that was you can argue going through their worst time to be a Cavs fan era was the Cavs. The Cavs sucked. The Cavs were awful at this point in time. Um, LeBron James had left, and the Cavs won, uh, in, in that period, 97 games. They were 97 and 215, had a 310% uh, win percentage. They didn't sniff the playoffs. They never did. But... But I will say at least you had Kyrie. Now, it's funny, like, since Kyrie has had such an eventful career, especially outside of Cleveland, people forget, or at least it feels like Kyrie was in Cleveland such a long time ago. And when you do think about it, we're, like, getting close to, like, 10 years of Kyrie, like, not being on the team. Um, but Kyrie did make those terrible Cavs team worthwhile uh, at least for, from a viewing perspective so they weren't great but they were at least entertaining once Kyrie got there not, not, not a Baron Davis slash Mo Williams 
Cavs team that they tried to wheel out there after LeBron left, that was a disaster. But once they got like Tristan Thompson and, and Kyrie Irving and then they drafted Deion Waiters, like it, it wasn't a good team. It was an entertaining team that, like, once LeBron did come back and he got rid of most of those guys, I was kind of sad to see it happen. Like, there were some fun, there were some fun small things that happened in that Cavs era that, like, are like fun Easter eggs to look at. Like, most spates in Sean Livingston, which basically were the heart of the Warriors bench during their rivalry with the Cavaliers, they were in Cleveland at this time leading a really good bench unit. There was one time where the Cavs almost ended the heat streak with Wayne Ellington starting at shooting guard and in like 2012 or 2013 or whenever that was, it was just way too recent for Wayne Ellington to be starting for your basketball team, but it did happen. So like, look, the Cavs stunk. They did not have any postseason success. They were at least a little bit entertaining, but it, it wasn't enough to hold you over, especially if nobody else in the city was good. And the one team that was close to decent was the Cleveland Guardians. But one, this city has a very complicated history with this baseball team. Look, I don't have any beef with the Guardians as an organization, or at least as much as a lot of people will have in the comment section of this video, because I don't know if I've ever talked about the Guardians on this channel, and this is as close as I'm ever going to get. I just don't watch baseball like that anymore. I, I burnt myself out on baseball in my youth. I can't get into it again. Um, but the Guardians were 309 and 339 they play so many games in baseball and the issue with the guardians it's not that they're a historically bad franchise they're the one team in cleveland that has not been pegged with that in the last 10 years or 10 20 years the issue with the guardians is that they're a historically cheap franchise like the same way you make jokes about how the Cincinnati Bengals will only get so good because they're so cheap, that's kind of what exists with the Guardians, right? Where the other teams in the city of Cleveland, you're confident that those situations can change because the issue with the Browns is that they weren't well ran. You get somebody well ran in there, you spend some money, now all of a sudden the fortunes of the team look much better. The issue with the Cavaliers, I mean, like you can say it's Dan Gilbert on one hand, but it's not because they're cheap. It's just because they're not well ran. The issue with the Guardians isn't that they're not well-ran. They are well-ran. I, I think you can argue that they're probably the one of the more well-ran sports franchises out there. The issue with the Guardians is that they're incredibly cheap and, like, callous about their cheapness. Like, they, they give out the worst quotes when they're going to lose great players. There's, they're kind of arrogant about their ability to replace these guys, which is kind of fair because, from my view, it looks like they do a good job of replacing these guys that they lose like pretty consistently like if you just go back from it i believe francisco lindor came to the guardians based off of like losing a player that people in cleveland really wanted i i think it was like cc sabathia or somebody like that but basically the the guardians gave up a player that was really coveted that the city wanted them to resign they didn't do that made the fans mad but they got somehow Francisco Lindor in that move. I don't know the specifics of it. If you do, please inform me in the comment section. You get Francisco Lindor. He leaves, and I believe that set the foundation for what the team is right now. It's like they're, they are really good at it, but they don't understand. Don't nobody want to hear that when you let go of Francisco Lindor. Like, they just have the worst public relation of all teams. So, yeah, they were close to 500. Yeah, they were the only team in the city to make the playoffs. But, like, the city still hated them, like, for the most part. And not because they don't love baseball or, or, or love the Guardians. It's because they hate the ownership of the team and how callous and cheap they are. And it just feels like, if you are a Guardians fan, that's what's holding them back from being one of the best franchises in baseball, which is a different level of frustration than what the other two teams provide you can argue that it's a better level of frustration because again it's not like the team is a is, is a disaster but if you feel like you're this close away from euphoria 
and somebody just being unreasonably cheap is the reason you can't reach it, you're going to be a lot more mad at that person than you are going to be at the other two teams who just look like they're a, they're, they're a world's away from you for you, if you feel me. Um, but that was the landscape at the time. The Cleveland sports team won 424 games. They lost 600 games um, in that four-year span. They played 1,000 24 games in the absence of LeBron James. It's all three Cleveland sports teams combined play 1,024 games in the absence of LeBron James. They played one combined playoff game in that period. Yes, Cleveland sports fans sat down and watched their team play 1,024 regular season contests and got out of it one playoff game. Miserable. Miserable time to be a sports fan there. Now let's move forward to today where I'm going to argue that it might be the best time to be a Cleveland sports fan. Now look, I'm not going to pretend to know a bunch about what the Guardians have going on, but people who do know what they're talking about when it comes to baseball seem to think that the Guardians have a lot going on. And that they're going to have a lot going on for the next couple of years. So they're probably going to be pretty good, right? I'm just taking their word on it, but it doesn't seem like this is a fluke, right? They're like 39 and 20. I imagine they're going to be very good. The Cleveland Cavaliers, look, a lot of people are up and down about where the Cavs are. But at the end of the day, they have Evan Mobley, who is going to be a tremendous two-way player. They have Darius Garland, who, if you keep him, is still a tremendous facilitator and point guard and scorer. If you get rid of him, he's going to be worth a lot because point guards like him don't grow on trees. So you're going to get a pretty hefty return for a dude like Darius Garland. And then you have Donovan Mitchell, who is every day past, seems more and more likely to re-sign with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And he is a legitimate superstar level player and he proved that during the playoffs this year you look at the cleveland browns and you have the most talented roster this team has had since the 1980s and you can argue that this team is even more talented than that one but then you compare and cross generation it just gets messy but just to keep it unmessy because it doesn't really matter this is better than the bernie kozar teams this is a very talented browns team they are as talented on the offensive line as they've ever been, as talented at running back, as talented at wide receiver, as talented defensively as any other team. And look, we don't know what Deshaun Watson is going to be, but we do know out of all the quarterbacks that the Cleveland Browns have ever had, he has the best professional track record at the youngest age of any quarterback to ever play for the Cleveland Browns. Now, that doesn't guarantee success, but it does mean the success is probably more likely than it was with with any other quarterback that you've had with this team so even the biggest question mark with this team if you're comparing this on other times of being a cleveland sports fan you got much better odds than you've had before i say all of these things to say we've lived through if you're watching this channel more than likely you've lived through the dark times you lived through 2010 you lived through 2011 you lived through 2012 you lived through 2013 some of the legit Worst times to be a Cleveland sports fan. Don't forget that, right? Always have that perspective when we're watching what we're watching now, because you can complain about certain things that this team is not doing or certain things that other teams aren't doing to get to that next level. But, if you compare what you're watching now to what you watched then, yeah, just don't take the success that all of these teams are having at the same time for granted is all I'm saying. Because if you look at the Browns, the Browns were at 18 and 46 when LeBron was gone. Right now, if you go from 2020 to now, they're 37 and 37 games over 500. And if you watch the Browns during that era, the imagining that the team would be seven games over 500 over a four year span playing, what, three playoff games in that period? You would have, you would have, you would have literally killed somebody to get that result in 2010. Like, <laughs> it was that bad, dog. Um, the Cleveland Cavaliers since 2020 are 165 uh, ver 
wins to 153 losses. Not the greatest um, numbers. They played 17 playoff games in that period. And, you know, you compare that to the 310 win percentage that they had when LeBron was gone. Obviously, things are much better in that front. And even the Cleveland Guardians, who are 187 over 158, they have had five playoff games in that period. And the whole entire city, if you look at it, right, you went through all of those games, 1,024 games, in the period that LeBron James was not playing for the team city anymore, and you won one playoff game. If you go back, well, not one, you went to one playoff game. It's a very big distinction. You went to one playoff game. You got to witness one playoff game. In the same similar four-year span, you are going to witness 25-plus playoff games appreciate what we're living through appreciate what we get to experience and i think um you know the, because it's not guaranteed that you're even going to be able to see this level of success consistently from your favorite teams but that's all i want to say y'all have a great day have an even better night peace